Good afternoon, uh, Ms. Burju, and welcome to uh, Six Questions, uh, the show where we couldn't remember how many uh, questions we wanted to ask you, so we just named the show Six Questions so that I don't go off topic. Uh, it's a show about student engagement. It's a podcast uh, for anyone involved in student, uh, student engagement to uh, look to something where other people in the same position may answer their questions because all of you have you know, some of the same stories, uh, some of the same problems, and all uh, of you uh, want to hear from each other. But unfortunately, there hasn't been an outlet uh, such as this uh, before. So we're probably the only uh, podcast on student engagement. And we're very, we're very, very proud to have you on the show uh, today. So thank you, Ms. Burju. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. What a great pleasure. Thank you. So the first question. Uh, that we'd like to ask uh, all our guests is, uh, could you tell us a little bit more uh, about your journey, your professional journey um, so far uh, in the education space, in education experiences, uh, different places that you've worked with? So I've started my career in education about two decades ago in China. Um, right out of college, I went to China as a volunteer and it was proper sweat work. We worked 60 to 80 hours a week. Um, but that experience was so rewarding that at that point I told myself, if I'm gonna be in any field, it's gonna be education. And if I'm gonna work with any type of people, they're gonna be students. So here I am um, 17 years later, 10 countries and nine universities. <laughs> I am sitting here working in student affairs and serving the people that I love the most, and those are our students. Wow, uh, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit more about the countries that you worked in? Sure. Um, so I've started working in China, and then I was in Saudi Arabia, Taiwan, uh, the UK, US, France, uh, Malta, uh, Spain. And right before coming back to the UAE, I was, I'm saying coming back because I was employed in the UAE for three years. Then I went to Paris, France for three years and then returned back. So that should normally add up to 10 countries. Wow. That is, uh, that is a lot of, uh, that is a lot of experience. We, we, we really, uh, yes, I, have, I've been blessed. We're, we're, we're going to have fun picking your brain uh, and, and getting more, <laughs> uh, getting some information from you. But uh Tell me, tell me something. And I um, forgot my, sorry, I forgot my name to Turkey. How could I do yeah, that? I worked as a young teacher in Turkey in my 20s. Wow. Uh, Turkey is a beautiful place. Inshallah, one day I want to visit it. Uh, but uh, after, uh, after, after working in, 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 you know, 10 countries and starting off with China and of course Saudi and, and UK and the United States, and, uh, Turkey, of course, um, how does it finally feel to be on uh, my podcast uh, here with us? Wonderful. What you're doing is very innovative and I'm so happy to be here on this podcast. And, uh, Thank you so much. Uh, we, we're, we're really honored to have you too. Um, okay, <laughs> next, next question. Uh, all right, so having worked with uh, students from all over the globe, uh, what do you believe truly drives students to perform at university? Um, I think the answer to that is definitely a sense of belonging. And I don't think it's only applicable to students, uh, even to you, where you work. Um, you want to believe that you belong to where you work and so that way you are dedicated and motivated and engaged. And um, part of my work is definitely giving individual care to our students and listen to their needs. But those are cliche. I mean, um, our students are our customers, our clients, and my job is to make them happy as student affairs. Yeah. But once they join us, I want to make sure that they feel like they belong to the university where they'll be given the years four or five years and that is my first goal to achieve that so that when they come every single day they feel like this is my second home and this is where I want to be uh, I think so sense of belonging for me is very important and I try to establish that with our students and of course most uh, a lot of the students that come to the universities are also expats right so they are longing to to feel that belonging uh, if you may yes and, and i think yes. that's, that's that's a wonderful way to look at it i mean in terms of, uh, i think that's the first first time i've ever heard uh that word being used uh in, in the space of student engagement um you know belonging is it's, it's absolutely incredible because it encompasses everything uh and and as you said correctly it becomes a second home for for the students because they're going to be here for the next you know two three four years uh which is uh 
when you put the thing. Okay, next question. Uh, is there a difference between student engagement methods across different cultures? Because you're probably one of the most qualified people to answer this question. <laughs> Um, student engagement is always a challenge because there are moments that students are ex- extremely motivated, uh, especially the first year freshmen. They come in after the orientation, they want to meet new people, they're in the uni, they're excited. And then you see that going up and down. And to keep that constantly, um, you know, up and high, it, you know, it takes a lot of effort from our side, from our office. Um, I would say it's different because in depending on the culture, for example, in China, when I was working in China, obviously it's a homogeneous society. I was only working 100% Chinese students, uh, whereas currently I'm working at a university with 81 nationalities. So when I try to achieve student engagement, I look at my audience. Uh, with China, say we're doing an event. I'm working with Chinese. So Chinese festival is the biggest event, for example. So I'll work on that. Here at this university, um, because we have 81 nationalities, I want to be able to cater them all. So what I do is we have this one big event called Global Day. I don't know if you're familiar. So I actually adopt depending on who I work with uh, when it comes to student engagement. I think with your uh, gamification, I believe it's the same. It's customized, self-catered. It's just you look at the people that you work with and uh, find out their needs and study your audience. And I know that then I can achieve student happiness. Um, So, I mean, it's, I want to be able to pro, always promote an environment that uh, promotes happiness and diversity. Um, however, like I said, in certain societies, for example, same thing in Saudi Arabia, where it's also homogeneous. I worked with only Saudis and I've studied what Saudis would need uh, for student engagement. And I was able to cater whatever they needed. So depending on where I work, the environment, it's very important to know um, um, to know what to do exactly to raise their um, motivation level. And of course, you know, different students, and I, I've seen this as well personally. I mean, I, I work with students uh, in, in North America a lot, and I work with students in the Middle East a lot. Uh, and as I said, I'm six months here, six months there. Uh, so when I'm working with different students, I do, uh, we, not, we don't just have to sort of change the way we present uh, you know what we're, what we're presenting, but also the examples that we use, uh, right? So, for example, if I use an example of uh, Carrefour or Dubai Mall in Canada, uh, it wouldn't work. Uh, vice versa, if I use the example of CN Power uh, from Canada in, in, in the UAE, it wouldn't work. Uh, and uh, I think you're right. I mean, it depends truly on the on the the, the audience, and, and of course, you know, the challenge of not just having the, the, the homogenous the homogenous uh, students, but also the students from all over the world. And Global Day sounds like uh, uh, something that would require a lot of work since you have 81. A lot of work, but it's worth it because students enjoy it so much. And I enjoy it too because I, I feel like I'm a global citizen. And when I visit each pavilion, um, it's just so wonderful to see their work. Um, I enjoy it a lot. I mean, it was just one example. For example, or another one is National Days. Um, uh, we celebrate, obviously, the UAE National Day, Flag Day. But we have students from Nigeria. We have students from um, in China, even. So I want to make them happy as well. So what do we do? We still have their National Day. We celebrate it right here on campus. Um, and, you know, show them that we value their culture and that uh, their home, away from home, is also here. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, it helps them make more friends and stuff as well, which is always uh, nice. Okay, so now we're going to uh, have the, the, the ha- halftime break. Um, so we'll ask you to uh, take up the app, uh, the application, and we're going to ask you your, your first question. Uh, so you can okay. open, up, uh, open up the app. Sure. You're going to lose me for a second, though. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay. Campus. Uh, J, the, 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 these campus are down this way. Uh, Anonymous, yes, I'm on your application. Thank you. Okay, so we, uh, so you need to open up uh, classrooms, and there should be, you should be uh, inside uh, one classroom right now. I'm on Anonymous Classroom 101. 
Yes, perfect. Okay, so that's good. So then you can open it up and then... Uh, oh, actually, just give me one second. Looks like you're the lecturer. <laughs> yes, I, 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 I try. Uh, okay. All right, so now uh, I'm going to ask you your, your quiz question, and uh, when you uh, answer it correctly, I am go uh, you, I would uh, I'm going to need you to show QR code to the camera, or actually no, you can just uh, show show the QR code, and and I'll I'll if you answer correctly, I'll give you the point. All right. Uh, okay. okay. So the question, your question is, uh, what is uh, one of the most popular dishes in Turkey? Option number. Wow. Uh, well, no. currently Turkey is leading the world with the food industry, as you know, with Nusret and Burak and um, so a popular dish. My God, that's going to be a tough one because uh, we'll, we'll help you out. We'll, we'll give you four options. Correct? We'll give you four options. Uh, option number one: uh, pizzas. Uh, option number two: burgers. Option number three: turkeys. Uh, so Turkey loves turkey. Uh, and option number four is uh, baklava. Well, that was very difficult, I have to say. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with uh, baklava. Oh, are you, are you sure? Um, let me think. I'm going to call a friend, can I? Uh, I'm sorry. This isn't, uh, this isn't who's going to be a millionaire. But uh, that is the right answer. And we have given you your points. So if you go back to your home screen, you will see that you have now 100 extra points. Yes. I see that. Thank you. It's, it's I feel magic. like I've accomplished what this morning yay go baklava <laughs> <laughs> all right so now you can come back on zoom and we can uh, we can carry on but how, how was that experience I mean, was, was that easy was that fun um it was, it was a lot of fun perfect it's, it's, I, we, I think you should definitely ha um, add the headline thing yeah like fun. be able to call a friend <laughs> oh. or, a, or, a, or a hint I hint, yeah, I will do that. I think that's, uh, uh, but I think we'll be, we, need to, we need to start doing that uh, now. Uh, from, from next time. But one question, one question. I really enjoyed this experience on your application. However, I would like to know when is it always, um, so it's obviously you asked me the questions, but yeah. in reality, the questions will appear on the screen and I'll have the multiple choice options. Uh, yeah, there, there or can, are, it be, can it be also interactive with the lecturer actually asking me the question during the lecture? We have both options. Uh, we have both options. Uh, both, both the options are there. We have uh, polls, we have questions, we have uh, soft skills, we have uh, even elections. Uh, you can do elections on the application. Uh, we've also used it now, we're using it now in, 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 in one of the universities where uh, students in the entrepreneurship class at the university are uh, they they want they have some ideas so they actually pitch it they share it with all the students on campus and they vote on how they like the product or not so if they like it then they go ahead with it um, and uh, so yeah that's the uh, there's a lot of things we can do with it uh, believe me and, and this not just works for classrooms but also for events um, so imagine when you're setting up an event. Um, and one of the biggest challenges, and I've heard this from people in student engagement and student affairs all over the world, believe me, um, is that there's so many issues with, uh, with, communication. With, with communication. So the first thing is coming up with the event. So what event are people, are people going to like? Is it going to be, would they like a movie night or a game night or a dance night? Then if we say a movie night, um, so, which movie do they want to watch? Do they want to watch Harry Potter? Do they want to watch uh, Lord of the Rings? Do they want to watch The Matrix? Do they want to watch something else? So, if we could get all this information fast from students, like immediate feedback from them, and then we can skip, then we could perhaps create an event that was that would attract more people. Then, the question is, how do we attract more people? So, uh, you know, to usually, if we send out emails or flyers or put it on noise boards right now. And we, we actually did a, a huge poll on, 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 on LinkedIn where we found out that uh, seven, more than 70% 70, uh, 70 of the students think that the emails that come in from the student engagement officer spam. Um, so they don't even open it. Um, so let alone opening it and let alone like RSVP for it, right? Uh, that so, frustrates me every time. Ex exactly. And so if there was an easier way for students to see which uh, which uh, events are going on on campus, and not just that, incentivize them to show up. So when they RSVP for it, now you as a student, as a director of student affairs can plan: Do I need ten chairs, twenty chairs, thirty chairs, forty chairs, or fifty? 
Do I need to order one pizza, oh. two pizza, three pizzas? Um, you know, how many people are going to show up? Uh, then based on that, we're also incentivizing them, not just with the free pizza, but in points. Uh, you know, you get 50 points for showing up. Um, and uh, so that sort of incentivizing uh, and, and that real time updating on the on the application, that's really what Alamus is all about. Um, it's all about sort of creating that, that that environment where students can, you know, attend their, their classrooms, they can earn points through attending events, do polls, events, and not just that, at the end of their university career, um, you know, right now, uh, if I asked you, uh, for a student that comes out of university, uh, what do you have to show for that? Uh, you're going to tell me, you're going to show me the, the, the transcript, right? Uh, the official transcript from the university. But that's just, that's that's one-tenth of the story, right? Uh, I mean, because think about it, one-tenth of the, of the time is only spent in the classroom. It's just great. Uh, but what do the students do outside of it? So we've got this new thing called Transcript 2.0, or the new transcript. And uh, basically, it'll show, it's like a student passport, which shows them their accommodations, how many events they went to, which events they went to, how many... So if you open up your app, you'll see physical points, cognitive points, uh, yeah. social points, and academic so it will do We that. call that portfolio building here, and they have to all work on it before they graduate, build up that portfolio, but your version is more on your application. Yeah, so it accumulates everything. Yeah, it's all digital. So everything is already tracked for you, everything's already done for you, and you can just literally sit there and see the analytics, as opposed to like printing out more stuff and doing everything. It's just, it's just, uh, it's, it's just better. But anyways, okay, we'll go to the next question. Uh, but uh, I hope you like it. All right, okay. Uh, yes. uh, perfect. All right, so uh, next question. Um, what is the key, uh, question number four, what is the key to communicating well with students and getting them involved with university events? So what is the key, that, that key factor that you uh, have identified that really pulls in the crowds? Well, you, you mentioned. You can't say free food. You can't say free food. I cannot say what? You can't say free food. Free food, yeah. <laughs> uh, that always works. Um, but um, while well, I have my own incentives, I bribe them with my genius ways. I shouldn't call bribing, but <laughs> <laughs> your the way that your incentives work with the point system. Mine actually, um, I tell them, well, your incentive for participating in an event is probably getting a nice, beautiful certificate or a nicely written recommendation letter for their portfolio. So I always look for ways where um, whatever it works with them, I'll ask them, what would you like in return? Um, but back to the question, how to communicate. Um, it's always been a challenge. And the most annoying part of my work when a student comes and says, well, I didn't know, or well, you never told me, or I had no idea you were doing this. And when you put so much effort into an event and you know that students didn't hear about it, it just kills you. Um, so uh, what I do is, I, I mean, these are the very traditional ways we email, we send out our massive email um, using our uh, schools in Moodle or we have our Moodle system where we upload it on there. Um, other ways are now we're very active on our social media. Uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, we also form, obviously, a student council, and student council have got their own WhatsApp group. So we try, I try every medium possible to get that communication out there. And I mean, I, it's, I mean, we still have glitches, obviously, because um, uh, maybe I reach out to 60 to 70 percent of our students, which is fine but when i even one for me when he or she comes in my office and says well i didn't know about it it i'm sad I, I get sad because they sometimes they're like i was i'm so good at this and i didn't know about this event uh for example i don't know some uh, drawing competition and it just breaks my heart and uh, knowing that they're so talented and they didn't even hear about it but at the same time i start telling them like check your email go on the social media please uh, look at your uh, simple it's just talk to people and other ways obviously word of mouth yeah. uh spread the news i call my students my soldiers <laughs> Wow. So I've got these, um, I've got my army and my soldiers. So what I do is with my soldiers, there are certain soldiers who are super active and those who are sleeping. So I easily, given my experience in the field, I know who are really good and active. So I work closely with them. And they normally are very good at word of mouth. They go around in the corridor, in the classroom, and they announce and so forth. So you find your own ways, I mean. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, you know, there's a which which you just what you said about the students not knowing when the, the event is. That was me in university, right? So huh. when I I would go around university, uh, like I would love to um, sort of uh, look at the posters and I'd be like, I, I'm one of those guys. My the way my brain works is that if I see something, I'm gonna figure out a way to sort of make it happen. So in my head, whenever I saw a poster, I'm like, maybe I could go to this painting class. I'm not very good at it, but I could maybe I get get good at it. Uh, and uh, I think it would really help me. And I see the time, and then I would walk away. Uh, and then I would come back three days later, and I was like, oh crap, the event was yesterday. I don't even remember. Uh, and that happens almost 99.99% of the time with most students. Um, and I think that's what sort of drives down uh, the numbers in the audience when uh, when when we uh, when, when when you uh, people like you uh, create events. But I'm going to say something right now, and you're going to call us uh, geniuses. Um, so I'll, I'll take the thanks in advance. Um, uh, so, or else I'll, I'll say you're welcome uh, in, in advance. Uh, so what we've done is actually we've gone one step beyond uh, with events in, in, in the Alamus app. It's so beautiful. It's seamless. Uh, when you go into the app as an organizer, you just create an event, then the students will see which events are going on right now. They can literally RSVP from the application, right? So that you wow. get a you get account. But we go one step further. We actually well, let me let me get my little sticker, star sticker and place it right on you on the two, screen. Two, two, <laughs> two steps further. Trust me, it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Uh, the, the, the second, the next step is once they RSVP for it, so uh, what they can do is they can actually set a reminder on their phone. So it just says set reminder and it sets a reminder in their phone. So half an hour before the actual event, uh, it will uh, it will remind them, and that's something that we think is really cool. I um, mean, it's it's honestly it would help uh, the it, it would help the it would help the cost so much. So maybe you can if you want to open up if you want to open up the app and you can see it yourself. So just if you just, just move, go to the app uh, and then you can open up uh, events. Yeah. Open up the uh, the Alamus app. And go to events. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm checking right now. On it, yeah. Yeah, and then you can open up events. So in, in events, there, there should be upcoming events. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then you can open it up, and you can actually check it out. So you can RSVP for it. So you can uh, book your spot, and then you can set a reminder on your phone. Mm, I saw. And it is that easy. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. And it's great. To, and, and you can also, so, and then as soon as you show up to the event, all you have to do is show your QR code. Uh, the event QR code? No way. Yeah. And, and the event or, uh, organizers would be notified, yeah. of course, that, that you're there. Uh, they get the um, points. So it's an added incentive on top of the food. Uh, so they, they get points for showing up. And of course, you guys have a record of everyone that was there. Uh, how many people do we have to make certificates for? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, all that good stuff is done in literally just like that. Um, so, well. Super. Okay, uh, question number five, I think. All right, so question number five. Uh, in, and this is actually a great segue because uh, we just talked about the app and talked about gamification. So what is mm -hmm. what role does gamification have in the future of student engagement? Because I know you said you, you do a lot of uh, gamification, so that's you're the right person to ask this question. Well, um, first of all, it, to enhance student engagement, it's a fantastic way because it's fun, first, first of all. And um, anything to optimize learning and getting that, uh, getting out of that traditional classroom setting and uh, implementing that on our, our phones. I mean, our phones are in our hands all the time. Why not use it for this purpose when you build up a portfolio, like you said, by the time they graduate, you have your own ellipse kind of transcript. Um, it's very nice. And I feel that the gamification can actually improve students' problem learning skills. Um, this is another way. I mean, we're all good at, supposedly good at using uh, iPhone and all these applications and gaming and so forth. But uh, to be able to, uh, why not uh, raise our skill sets by learning skills like problem serving and critical thinking and all these skills that could be applicable through one simple tool like this. Um, again, the bottom line for me, the most interesting part of the gamification part is taking that traditional classroom to a fun environment 
um, and that's I think what you guys are trying to achieve uh, and it's really nice um, and uh, from what I hear from from what everything you've told me um, most of our students have a challenge with time management and organization especially in a medical student they're so worried about you know their exams and every student is but medical university it's another uh, ball game so having an application where it organizes all for you it's just amazing yeah and uh, all those features that you told me set, like reminders and, yeah. and so forth um, it's really nice so how do you how do you uh, I mean in, in, in your uh, you touched upon two, two very important things so I'll, I'll talk about the second one first uh, you talk about time management uh, and so how do you I mean do you how do you reward students for being on time or, or how do you sort of teach that time management to these students well in the part of the world that we live in as you know <laughs> time uh, is not really you know people are not known for punctuality unfortunately and it's a challenge uh, obviously um that's why we give that half an hour uh, gap like knowing that they're going to be late for any event um, say when at event I'll start at 12 I'll tell them uh, 11.30 so I know they're going to be late um, but uh, I think uh, freshmen um, they they have this challenge with time management but as the years pass I think they get more mature about it and they uh, uh, they adjust themselves to the university life it's an adjustment yeah. Uh, like every skill we learn in life, it's just, uh, it takes a while because coming out of high school when your mom wakes you up and then a lot of things are reminded by your parents and then you come to university, you stay in the dorms and uh, you're your own person. Um, I mean, it's it's transition, leaving home and being independent. And having someone tell you exactly what to do as opposed to you thinking on your own. Uh, I think that's that's, that's a critical thing. The, the, the second thing that you, you talked about was the, the 21st century skills. Uh, and, and you talked about problem solving and, uh, of course, this complex problem solving and this critical thinking uh, that every single university in the world today uh, is trying to implement and, you, and trying to uh, and, and trying to inculcate in the curriculums uh, of the universities because, uh, of course, they're all part of employability skills and helps their students get, get employed. Um, do you think uh, time management? I, I, I have never seen time management in, in, in one of those uh, in, in one of the charts because I've seen a lot of the, uh, a lot of them, but I've never seen time management. It's good that you picked up on them. Uh, how important, and, and in your opinion, and this is just a, a general question. Do you think if we told students that we're going to be teaching you 21st century skills, they would be more willing to learn? Or if we did it informally through a game uh, where they didn't know they were learning, but they were learning, do, where, where do you think they, they would learn more? Well, uh, come on, option B. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, not knowing that they're actually learning, but you do it in a smooth way uh, through game elements. Uh, sure, it's genius. Okay, perfect. Fred, you're, you, you, you just made my day. I, I think you, you made my month. <laughs> I'm, All I'm, right. Uh, you're, because, uh, you know, and and I, I truly believe that. I mean, I think that uh, if you don't tell them they're going to learn, they would learn more. If you tell them you're going to you're going to have fun, they will automatically learn. Uh, instead of like spelling it out uh, properly. But yeah, perfect. Thank you for that. All right, so last question. Having heard and seen what Alamus is, uh, how do you think it will assist universities in their student engagement pursuits? Um, I mean, it's just basically summary of everything we've talked about in the last, I would say, two or three minutes. Yeah. Um, all those skills that they would acquire uh, once they step into real life to get jobs is already being trained through Alimis um, by using this app, by using this tool. Um, it's very innovative and, uh, and I mean, it optimizes the learning options uh, for our students. Um, it's, I think, very nice and uh, it's a little competitive, I think. There is a competitive factor, obviously, there are games, right? You gain points. Exactly. So, so uh, yeah, there's the that's also very good. Yeah. Because I'm um, competition, I mean, I'm not, I mean, competition is good, obviously, to a certain extent, but um, it's point based, level based, and then it's competitive. All the skills that you need once you step into real life is going to be given to you through this app. 
for four years, say you start from freshman year, and you will be using these skills that you learn on a simple tool in real life with um, talking to people, trying to get a job in, in work environment. So it's it's very beneficial, I think. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for uh, your time. Thank you so much for, for summing everything up. Uh, so oh, it's please. been great. It's my pleasure. We, we really appreciate it. And we're, we're, we're going to ask you to do one uh, one more small little thing, uh, one more small little piece of work. Uh, there's a poll inside the application. Uh, so we'd like you to fill that up. Uh, you can do it uh, right now or you can do it a bit later as well. That's fine. But we'd love to see, we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, and of course, this is something that we can do um, at events as well, uh, you know, where you want feedback at the events and things like that. So, of course, the question is, uh, all, the, the questions are all based around me. Uh, how was I as an interviewer? Um, how was my hair today? I'm just kidding. Uh, it was, uh, it, 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 it's, thank you, thank you. Uh, it, it's, uh, my mom would be really happy to be proud. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about, uh, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, for us to learn uh, more as well and, and, and uh, help and, you know, spread the message of student engagement and help gamification and help more students be engaged at campus because at the end of the day, it helps not just the, the people like you, but it also helps the overall university because it helps the students' attention numbers. Um, 100%. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity. This was fun. I really thank appreciate you. it. And I really, as a coming from an educator perspective, I really thank you and your company, organization for coming up with such genius ways to engage our students in learning in a fun way. I really thank you because what you're doing is trying to make my life easier and then um, make students' uh, life fun. And uh, uh, so thank you. I wish you all the success, really. I really hope that this is implemented in every single university and uh, used all around the world. Perfect. Thank you so much. 